Okay, the installation is completed. Close it. Let's open the failover cluster on the node 2. Let's go to the node 1. refresh the cluster services as you will see the dependencies here you will see the dependencies of the SQL server instance it depends on uh, cluster disk 1, disk 2 and the network name and here in the properties you can set the policies since we install the SQL server on node 2 here you will see the the node that we just added okay let us go to the node 1, node 2. Refresh the cluster. Right now you can see that the current host server is node 1. Okay. The DTC, this is being run on node 2. This is node 2 is owner of this resource group. SQL server is running on node 1. Okay. We can fail over so we can we can go to management studio and see the mission name. Close this uh, installation window. Open the management studio. Connect to the cluster. We are able to connect because while installing we added this login. Okay, otherwise we would not have connected. Now, Okay, if you execute that, it will tell you what is that we have. It is Enterprise Evaluation Edition, RTM, Release to Manufacturing, and this is the version name. Okay, now to find out which mission is processing, we have the server property.
okay it will tell you the node one is processing currently the node one is processing the that is the one of the resource group cluster resource group okay copy that statement now we are going to fail over manual fail over the SQL server resource group to node 2 okay move the resource group As you can see here, the current owner is node 2. Okay, now all the services are failed over to node 2. Now node 2 is taking care of the the database request okay now if you execute this query now it will say node 2 okay so as you can see here node 2 is the current owner and uh, the whole group in the SQL server resource group will be processed by node 2 as you can see these are the two clustered disks being used by the SQL resource group both are being processed by node 2 and msdtc sorry ms yeah msdtc it is being node 2 even we can fail out that node 1 node 1 move this cluster to node 1 then in that case you will see the node 1 here okay see this is this is how you manually fail over the cluster uh, if you are applying patches service packs one two whatever it is uh, then you, you first you will apply the patch uh, service pack on passive node if it is actively if it is active it, if it is uh, serving uh, some nodes or some some resources then you need to fail over those to the, the other node make it as a complete passive so that uh, you can apply the service pack but it would be good to uh, remove them from the possible owners to uh, it's uh, you know um, it's good to remove the node node from the possible owner to apply the service packs that way you can avoid the unplanned failovers okay and if you want to add some more disks then you can go and add storage for example I have one one disk now which is free I can add that so I have the cluster disk 3 I can select that and if I say okay that that disk will be available for the SQL server cluster we can store uh, partition data or some other uh, index file group or some other file groups on this disk okay if you want to remove no problem just right click that and uh, remove from sql server group the resource will be removed okay if we remove that then the disk will be available for any other service
I don't know why it still says loading. It should show the list of uh, shared disks here. Let me close this window and open the window again. Maybe I'll go to node 2 and refresh the list of uh, shared disks. Okay, here I'm able to see that. Don't know why I. Okay. This is the failover cluster setup. This is how you do that. Uh, this is active passive cluster setup. Okay. Uh, on one node, the services will be up and running. On the other node, it will be down. The moment if it fails over to the other, other node, then the services on the other node will start processing. Okay. Uh, as you can see, for, for example, this, the SQL server, it is being processed by node 2. If you open the SQL server configuration manager, on, on the node 2, right now node 2 is processing. That is why you see that all the services are up and running on this machine. If you go to the node 1, the services are down. But if I fail over, for example, now what I will do, I will manually fail over this resource group from node 2 to node 1. Okay. Okay, go ahead and fail over. It will fail over. If you observe the services here. Right now the services are not started. Refresh again. Refresh. See here, the change, the state is change pending. So the cluster is going to start the services on node one now. Okay, now the database services is on running, and agent will start after the database service because agent depends on database services. Browser is not cluster aware, so it will be running. Depends on how the startup mode is. Okay, now node one is processing. So this is how you fail over. Okay, let us see if we need to cover anything in this uh, failover clustering. preferred owners if we say preferred owner is node 1 and let us say if this if the clustered uh, resource group it is being served by node 1 node 1 is processing the the cluster then if the preferred owner is up and running then services will fail back to the preferred owner okay so then automatically it will it will it will fail back to the preferred owner so uh, you typically you don't want to do that okay and these are some of the settings how you want to fail over and uh, you can change the network name okay even you can edit the IP address so this is good and here are the dependencies the network name depends on the IP address and policies policies are like how the restart 
how many times uh, restart is going to happen if it fails over uh, what are the things that needs to be taken care of things like that on possible owners as we keep adding the nodes you will see the possible owners here okay and this is uh, E salive check and uh, this is another uh, uh, another another check I think there are two functions E salive and uh, there is one more so basically these are the this is a, this is heartbeat so every now and then it goes and verifies if the other node is active so it uses the default um, default settings uh, I think uh, for every uh, for every 15 seconds or 30 seconds it just pings the other server and uh, this is a thorough uh, analysis this is just the basic uh, uh, ping so this is pretty much it okay uh, let us see what we covered so far we installed Windows Server 2008 and we installed SQL Server failover clustering active passive now we are going to install SQL Server 2008 service pack 1 on both the nodes for that what we will do first we will install service pack 1 on the passive node okay after we install we will fail over the SQL Server resource group from the active to passive and install the service pack 1 on 1 on the new passive server okay that way we can that, that way we can cover both the nodes we cannot uh, install service pack 1 uh, if it is running the services are running so we have to install service pack on the um, passive nodes first okay if uh, both the nodes are active active then we need to manually fail over on, on one of the node so that uh, both uh, services both the uh, instances will be processed will be processed by one node uh, until we uh, complete the service pack installation and after that we can manually fail over both the cluster onto the uh, passive node and install the service pack one on the new passive node okay we will we'll see that how to uh, do that service pack one in the next step